So we looked at our capacitor, and it was pretty small, 18 picofarads, and it was pretty big, 16 centimeters across. So you can imagine we would like larger capacitors, capacitances in smaller things. So we're going to figure out one way to do that is to put an insulator in a capacitor. We haven't talked about insulators that much. We mostly talk about metals. So insulators are just these things that we could charge up by rubbing and use them to move charge around. They actually do a little bit more than that. So let me draw real quick our capacitor. So our two plates, negative plate over here. Standard capacitor. And we know it would create a field if we did nothing. We know it would create a field E naught. And we know that E naught is equal to sigma over epsilon naught. If each one of these had a charge Q, plus Q, minus Q, and plus sigma, minus sigma, and they had some area, et cetera. We know that would be the electric field. Now let's put an insulator in here. And see what's going to happen. Well, insulators, there's no free charge in the insulator, but the charge can deform. So deform is a strange thing to say a charge can do. Let me show you what I mean. If you have an atom that's just a positive nucleus and it's surrounded by a negative electron cloud. Let's pretend it's beautifully symmetric, nice and round. And you apply this E naught to it. E naught gets there. Then what's going to happen is the, if the nucleus sits here, the electrons are real light. They feel a force through the electric field. They want to go to the left. They can't completely come off because then well, they just can't do that, right? They're still attracted to each other, but this electric field is, is deforming them and putting the electrons more over here. So it creates. Uh, a dipole moment, it creates a little internal electric field, E induced, we'll call it. Okay. Each little atom in this ideal world here makes a teeny little E induced. However, there's a bunch of atoms in the insulator. So they can make a response, E induced. Okay. So when you put those together, then the field in the gap is just superposition. You just add them up. So it's E naught minus E induced, okay? So what you see is that the electric field is reduced inside the capacitor. When you put in a material that has this ability, so we just have air, air is very sparse. Air doesn't really, air technically does this a little bit, but it's almost all vacuum. When you put in a solid material that can make a really big E induced, then it can really affect the field. We usually don't write it this way in terms of there's the original field minus something, it's usually you turn things around with a bunch of algebra we don't need to do, and we say E in the gap equals E naught over a big thing called K, the dielectric constant, okay? So K of the insulator. So you can see the dielectric constant reduces the electric field, and how big it is depends on how good the material is at doing this. Different materials will make a, a larger induced field than other materials. In terms of the capacitor, though, what this tells us is we had a delta V naught, but then the delta V, the voltage it takes to build up a certain charge difference, or thinking the other way, if you put on a certain charge, the amount of voltage that builds up is actually going to be delta V naught over the dielectric constant. Because between, you know, because V equals ED, because the separation remains the same, so the electric field and the voltage are proportional to each other. So if the electric field drops by K, the delta V drops by K. So now we can start to think about how putting in the insulator affects the actual capacitor's behavior. 